So at the moment, I've been working a lot in a fabric hardener. And the fabric hardener that I use, we can also mix with other um, powders and mediums, and then we can turn them into clay. So this one here is all like the fabric hardener, but then the same product with a, a mixture of uh, paper powder into it will also make the clay. It's t-shirt, so I come from a recycled artist is what I would prefer to do, although that's not the only thing I do now, um, but that's where I started. So the idea of using junk and waste materials and industrial waste. So inside here is cardboard and waste paper, and then this is old t-shirts. That's right, so it's so versatile that you can make, for, go from mixed media to sculpture to artwork onto wood or metal and it sticks things together which is another reason why I fell in love with the product because so often you have an idea and then not the mechanism to put it together and with this product because it has a glue component to it you can stick things you never envisioned sticking together stick them together. We use a metallic pigment and the metallic pigment makes it look more metal so you can still use waste products but then turn them into something that looks more like bronze. Yes, that's right, it's not as hard as metal because it's, it's fabric, yeah. So it still can have some flexibility in it until you've over varnished it and if you put a lot more varnish it'll stop the humidity going in but you can still see it's got a bit of flexibility. So it's, it's an interesting mix what I do between craft and art as well. So sometimes I lean more towards a craft angle but then to me there's a lot of craft that is art so it, I'm finding that crossover and then there's other artworks that I, um, I put a lot more meaning into so they, it might have a recycled message to it. I put waste paper into making wetland birds to make a comment about all the waste paper that goes down our storm drains and that all ends out into the wetlands. Storm drains because they, they all go out to the wetlands and we hate wetlands but we don't care that we've got waste paper lying in our drains in the middle of the city and junk mail basically yeah and meanwhile we'll destroy these beautiful wetlands and then we all don't like a lot of the wetland birds because they become rubbish birds but they have nowhere to live uh, I have a few people I've trained now who also are doing works in power tech so we'll probably pull together some exhibitions with Michelle's help um, yeah and then we do the sometimes we do the craft shows um, I have some at reverse garbage in uh, wool and gabba uh, that would be the recycled side. Uh, then I have here. Um, that's probably about it so far. So yeah, I believe I'm still emerging. Oh, so the motivation came from wearable art. Interesting, that's where I got inspired. So we lived in Broome and I helped run a community centre up there. And it was uh, there was a lot of women in the community centre. Um, and there was, it's a very artistic town, Broome. So people would come and do workshops and I would help enable the workshops, but they never get around to doing them myself. Uh, and I, I didn't come from an art background, I was a science, history, anthropologist, oh, really? yeah, a completely different background. And uh, they would run a big show called a wearable art show in Broome, and I'd get it, I got involved with that with my kids. Um, they wanted to go on stage dressed up as things that you out of recycled material or glow in the dark, or it was a lot of fun. And so from there, I was inspired to make wearable art jewelry, uh, and it, then. Once we sort of bounced our way back to Brisbane, I found um, Powertex and so this kind of took off. But I still do the jewellery, I'm still, yeah. And now Powertex um, is in wearable art back down in Perth. So I'm, I'll probably bounce back around into wearable <laughs> art again. <laughs>